Good Monday morning, Market Chameleons, and everyone joining us for the first time. Thanks for coming by and checking out the Market Chameleon pre-market show with this man, Dimitri Pogamonic. How are you doing, D? Good morning, Will. How are you? Good. You want to start with the disclaimer? Yep. Good morning, everyone. Before we get started, keep in mind, Will and I and Market Chameleon, we're not a registered investment advisor. We're not a broker dealer. We're not telling you what to do. We're just sharing ideas. If you need advice, call your registered investment advisor call your broker that's what they're there for um there's the disclaimer and let me share my screen as i'm doing that if anyone has joined us for the first time uh will and i we do this show to help answer any questions you may have about the market chameleon tools the data the analytics um, if you have a question, you could type it into the live chat on YouTube. Will's watching it. He'll read it back to me. If you want to come on the show and ask your question live, um, we we provide a link to Zoom on that live chat. Click on that. When you get into Zoom, click on raise your hand. That lets us know you have a question. And once we let you in, you could ask that question live. Um, to give you guys a couple minutes to put your questions in and for more people to join us. We'll start out taking a look at the pre-market report, see if we could get insights on what's trading in a pre-market hours, and then we'll move on to the questions, okay? So, Perfect. Yep. so let's start out with pre-market. These are stocks trading in a pre-market hours. I'm gonna come down here and we have a list of our most active stocks, our biggest percentage gainers, biggest percentage decliners, I see 93 stocks so far made our percentage gainers list, 156 on our decliners list. So from this perspective, looks like we're setting up right now for bearish bias at the open. Um, and, you know, of course, there's that major news over the weekend about, um, you know, the, the Hamas attack on Israel. And now that, like, you know, conflict is like... Um, now like in full I think like an award down there so this is like our second flare-up on the global in the geopolitical uh landscape we got Russia Israel both yeah um, I mean you have you have Europe Congress. you know war a war in Europe and now you have a war in the Middle East in right the Middle East yeah and all this has potential to get out of control to spread because you got you know, some really, you know, advanced weapons both on both both parts. And, and you've got other, you know, countries and in, involved in there in a conflict that are getting could get sucked in. So that that's pretty considering all that, you know, the markets so far seem pretty muted to that, you know, you know, to to what's going on. But now we got like two major events out there that could just you know suck the entire world into a conflict um so, um well let's continue on seeing what's going on in pre-market hours because if we have questions i do want to leave it for questions but let's come up here and we have this calendar view and these are dates you could go back and see what happened in pre-market hours um you could see that October 6th, which was on Friday, looked like we had, it was overwhelmingly bearish. You could see 1.6 billion on the buy side versus 9.3 billion. And that Friday, after the jobs report, which was good, looked like you know that in the market sold off in the morning, thinking, well, the Fed has more uh tightening to do more interest rate tightening to do for a longer period of time but then it reversed in the middle of the day and we were up on the day right so it was i think the market was up over one percent on on friday so it shows you the strength of the, the bullishness enthusiasm it's, it's still in there um and i think a lot of it has to do if you look at all these ai conferences that are happening you know every they're you know silicon valley i mean they're all really all over the world you have all these ai conferences and if you listen to them they're extremely bullish it's extremely you know if if you're listening to it and you're an investor and they're telling you about like all these 
apps that they're working on and how well it, it, you leaving those conferences you can't help yourself but be you know extremely um you know bullish on the future um and that i think could be part of like driving you know this enthusiasm even when we have like higher interest rates inflation and all these geopolitical risks um but this is right now october 9th um so far we have 273 stocks up in the pre-market hours 498 stocks down um as far as volume we have 92 million shares trading on up volume versus 62 million on down volume if we convert that volume to dollar value we got 773 million dollars worth of stock trading higher versus three billion dollars worth of stock trading lower so from that perspective still looks like a um you know bearish bias in the pre-market you know but not not quite as like you could see compared to like Friday um let's come down here we're going to look at it from one more perspective and then we'll take questions if you have questions Will um when we look at this list we have um you, you'll notice we have small cap stocks in there uh ETFs leverage products any security listed on a major U.S. exchange if it's trained in pre-market hours and meets our conditions and thresholds for liquidity volume price all that it can make this list to narrow it down to a smaller group of stocks we could use the filters above if you have a watch list you can um filter this list by stocks in your watch list we're going to use this one as an example an ETF so we'll drop it down we have different ETFs to select from. We have uh, some broad-based ETFs, sector ETFs. Um, let's choose this one, SPY, S&P 500 ETF. We click on that, and the list below gets filtered by stocks that are holdings in the SPY uh, ETF, which is which are the S&P 500 constituents. And here we see 27 stocks made our percentage gainers list, 31 on the decliners. So like you know, you know more more bearish than bullish from that perspective but not like an overwhelming amount um you know so that's what we have so far in the pre-market hours well we gave it a couple minutes I guess I'll I'll take some questions if you have them uh we did have a question I, I don't know can you screen by defense stocks Jack Jackie's asking defense stocks will do well he's asking a question uh is there a way I guess we can see how the defense stocks are doing in the pre-market I guess we could look at the perform you know so this this is shown performance by industry so uh let me see if I could just you know actually there are there are a lot of let me see if I could find defense I'll tell you the oil stocks but, may do well yeah yeah here's aerospace and defense so this is showing you how they've been performing as a group in the median you know up 9.9 percent but you can look in here you know look at through these there's aerospace and defense um let me see if I could do it by you know highest market cap so you got Boeing RTX Lockheed general dynamics I mean G might be is G like produce some of the uh well I'm sure they produce some parts yes yeah so yeah I guess you, you could go through them and look you know what you think you, you know what's interesting is that I think do you put in you know you know cyber security as part of defense I think that I I was reading that there were in this attack on Israel they said it was more sophisticated and, and and that Iran if you read the Wall Street Journal Iran helped plan this attack they they were behind the attack and that Israel had um in the er, early part of it experienced like a like a cyber attack like DDoS attack so they started you know attacking some of their software infrastructure um and that I think 
you know, we, we also saw that in Ukraine and Russia. Um, and, it, you know, it's a new, you know, now landscape, it's a new, uh, you know, weapon that we didn't see historically, you know, that all of a sudden, you know, you're attacking people's infrastructure you know, software and infrastructure, electronic infrastructure, like the ability to use their technology. So you're, you're attacking the technology of, of the other, you know, which, which, you know, you could cripple them that, right. It, it could be just, just as dangerous, just as effective and, and just as potent as, as any other weapon when you cripple the other side and they don't have the ability to, to use their systems, use their defense systems or, or, you know their security systems and you know that's that's one area that i that i that i think you know has now become more more important that we didn't think about you know historically that's that's you know the cyber security or the ability to use the that as a weapon um rob, right? rob was asking could you uh go through the steps you use to get to the screen again yeah, so under stocks, if you go to the right side here, there are reports, and I went down here, performance by industry. So this breaks down the the stocks into, you know, it, it categorized them by industry and groups them there. So when you click on it, this one, performance by industry, you end up here on this report on this report, which lists the different industries, you know, the amount of stocks in there. Um, this is from Friday's uh, close, so we're not open yet. This updates during regular trading hours, you know, the 15 minute delay. So this is as of Friday's close. It shows you, you know, the number of stocks that are up versus down in that group, the median return, and then the median return of the group for two weeks, three months, six, so you could track them over a longer period. Um, we also show, you know, how far away they are from their 52 week high or slow as a group. Um, and then there's some fundamentals in here showing you like the median P, for example, price to sales, price to book, gross margin. If you just looked at it from a fundamental perspective, gross five-year revenue growth, net income growth. Um, so if you open it up, you know, you have the group stats, and then you could compare the individual stocks inside it, right, versus each other, or how they're doing it. So, so for example, food distribution, we could see, you know, gross margins 15%. Well, if you picked out, you know, one of these, Let's do it by market cap. You know, uh, this, this is Cisco, but not the Cisco. This is a different Cisco, the food. And here. if you click on that little uh, information sheet, you know, tell you, tell you about the company. So you can see it's a food distributor. And um, we could look at its, you know, revenue growth of 5%. Well, how does that compare to the the overall group of 8.4%, you know, net income grew by 4.4% versus the median growth 10.68%. So how does how does the valuations measure up? So here you could look at the price to sales, price to book value, uh, it's PE ratio. So just a quick way to kind of look through the industries how they're performing versus each other. And then you could open up the industry itself to see what companies are in there and how they perform versus each other. So it's just kind of like a starting point. But the way I got to the defense, you know, instead of looking th through it this way, I just looked at the, in this search box at the top. This search box controls what's contained inside this table all right so it doesn't leave it's not like the top search box which takes you 
navigates you to a different page on the website. This search box only searches what's within this data table. So when I typed in defense, you know, I filtered this out, aerospace and defense. So there are 72 stocks, 82% of them were up on Friday. And if we open it up, you know, we could see the different different stocks in there. What I did was just sort it by market cap. If you click on these, you could sort it by market cap. And these were the, the top, top stocks by market cap. If you wanted to sort it by like, you know, revenue growth, we could do that too. So here's the, by revenue growth, you know, highest revenue growth, which would be like, you know, you see smaller cap stocks in it. Oh, as a reminder, Will, tomorrow we're having a webinar with interactive brokers at 2 p.m. And we're going to discuss the different trading sessions, you know, the differences, what kind of insights you could get between pre-market, regular trading hours, after hours, opening cross, closing cross. We're going to di discuss that, um, get some insights. I'm going to try to push out a new report overnight that will that will be available to you guys. So that will be tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern with Interactive Brokers. You do have to register with it because we're not hosting it. So it's not going to be like this one on YouTube. It'll be, you know, with within Interactive Brokers. Um, but if you register, then you could go watch it live, ask questions. Um, and that's tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, I'm putting that link right now in the YouTube chat. So that's for everyone to see. Um, one more thing I'll mention, you know, I'm going to go to the bonds here and we could see here the bond, this is the 20 year treasury, um, ETF, right? TLT. So you could see here, I shares 20 plus year treasury bond ETF. And when, you know, you kind of pay attention to this, well, how are the markets reacting? Um, to this crisis, right? Like to the, you know, now, now we have this Middle Eastern crisis out there. Um, now it's like a military conflict. How are they reacting to it? Like, what, what are the risks? And usually, you know, the dollar, the gold, silver, it's flight to quality. And, and you think, okay, you know, people are going to buy the long bond and drive the prices higher, uh, yields lower. But so far, yeah, they're, you know, they can't, it looks like they're putting a little bit in the treasury, but they're not really going for that longer dated maturities. You know, they, so, so if they are buying the dollar, it doesn't look like they're running towards the longer dated maturities or are anticipating that the Fed is going to, you know, decrease, like, you know, decrease interest rates due to this. All right. So, um, so far in the marketplace, you know, we, it's, it's a little bit off, but not like where the markets are interpreting this as, you know, something like that's going to become more major, um, conflict, you know, that spreads and give you, just to give you guys an idea how sensitive the bonds are to interest rate moves because it seems like, well, okay. So the interest rates move, you know, from 1% to 5%. It's not, it seems like, well, it's not a big deal, but if you're long, the longer dated options, the maturities, like look, let, let's take a look at this in a chart. Let's do a five-year chart. Uh, let me do, maybe you would see in a three-year chart. You could see here the slide, you know, in the treasury. This is this this is a treasury ETF, right? Like the long-term bond ETF. These aren't junk bonds. These aren't, you know, these aren't, um, you know, stocks or convertibles. This, it's, it's not even like, 
you know, AAA commercial paid, these are treasuries. So, so they're moving, the price is moving inversely with the interest rates. And you could see here from October 20th, you know, to 2020, when we went, the Fed just lowered the interest rates to, to zero, bought, bought the long bonds, the, 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 the QE, the easing, quantitative easing, they started buying treasuries. And so look what happened since we're starting at $160 and you're down to, you know, in the 80s, 85. And that's how sensitive, you know, the bond prices are to, to interest rates. You know, that's, that's a huge, you know, let me see if we could look at it from this perspective. So you could see here, in the last three years, that bond has lost 42%, right? 42%. If it, now, of course, you're making, I think actually this includes dividends in it. So that, that you would have been down 42% even, you know, after collecting dividends. And of course, the dividends back then, you know, were like 1% or whatever. So the the bond market very sensitive you know those long bonds are very sensitive to to those uh you know to the interest rates but i guess well if we don't have any questions i'm gonna just like you know end it right here then yep no, no questions are uh popping up i mean i wish you could explain to me why uh the market isn't down more it seems like if I if you if I you told me on Friday that you know a war of a, a major conflict would be breaking out in the Middle East mm -hmm. on Monday and the market was only down this amount, I'm I would have been shocked. But you know, it's it's, it's amazing. Uh yeah, because we're getting right, like you're you're seeing risks, right? It's not like so far we so far. We haven't witnessed fast grown earnings, right? So the earnings revisions are going have been declining, really. So we haven't gotten this like product big productivity gains or earnings growth. We have a strong labor market still, which is positive, but we have higher interest rates. Um, you know, and the interest rates have a lagging effect. So you would think higher interest rates, higher, higher cost of capital, you know would would change the forward looking forward looking expectations right it makes things it makes things riskier you know inflation is still stubbornly high it makes things more risky volatile um you know we have the yeah the geopolitical risk and the stocks themselves are are priced at historically high valuations you know there's they're they're, they're they're priced at valuations that where you you're you're not you're you know that that will be consistent with high growth you know like high growth more certainty and almost like you have a a stimulus behind you as well right like like high growth with government stimulus and now we're going like the opposite way but the momentum in the stocks is is incredible and the only you know I could only think about is that there's probably still a lot of liquidity and in the tech space, it's coming, a lot of it's coming from the tech yeah, space. Yeah, most, most of it's coming from the tech space. It's coming from the tech space. We looked at this, I think on Friday, you know, we we compared here, like we compared SPY, you know, to, do we do like, you know, we compared SPY to like say, the Russell 2000, and we could see a huge divergence. And then we took the text, you know, NASDAQ 100 tech heavy, that that even diverged even more. So the tech space right now is really bullish. You know, like they're just, you know, they're just giddy over there with, and it has to be, you know, what they're seeing, you know, what they're, you know, the, their conferences, their meetings, their, you know, they're, they're talking about 
I think AI, you know, because we could see, you know, who are the big winners here, like NVIDIA, Meta, all these that have anything to do with AI is creating um, a lot of, like, you know, bullish enthusiasm. And they're just looking at it like, wow, you know, like what? And they're pouring money into it right now. That's what that's what it looks like to me. So irrelevant of whatever's going on, they don't want to miss out on this, like, you know, AI boom, right? That we're going to experience an AI boom. It's going to, you know, change. I think Jamie Dimon was saying himself, we're going to go to the AI technology is so good. We're all going to go to a three-day work week, all right? So so everybody's going to work three days, three days a week. Wait, yeah. weren't we just talking with someone the other day on a po- about the 24-hour op- options market? Is that going to come? How do you do that in three days? Yeah. Well, we're not going to even trade. Our AI is going to trade and just make us money. That's why we're going to, that's why we don't even need to work. You know, we're just going to press a button. The AI is just going to trade for oh us. It's going to make everybody. So <laughs> I don't know who, who the, who's going to be on the other side of this AI, right? <laughs> like, I don't know, <laughs> because... For a trade to happen, somebody has to be on the other side of your bets. But the the maybe the conclusion is like, you know, that um this this will take care of everything and and it, it it's gonna increase our productivity. And you and I were talking about it, that AI, this technology has you know been around for a while. Like if you look at you could go on YouTube and look at MIT lecture, you know, the 10 years ago, they were talking about it. It's been getting better. And I think Chad GPT kind of opened everybody's eyes, um, you know, it, but it's been around, you know, for a while and, and companies have been using it. They've been using it in trading. They've already been, you know, they've been using it in social media. You know, Google's been using it internally. Meta's been using it internally. Um, a lot of these you know, Amazon has been using into Netflix. You know, they they've been using this technology already. Um, you know, and you were already making that bet ten years ago, right? On hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. You're investing in Netflix ten years ago. You were making that AI bet, or 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 Meta, or you know, they're not. It's not like they're just and they're and they're being priced like it's already successful, right? That yeah. That I mean, yeah, listen, you look that, at. Meta is a perfect example. I mean, it was, you know, it's rallied off those lows because everyone was demanding, you know, they wanted to control their costs, right? And what was the hot, you know, that the, the item that was going to change everyone's life, you know, two years ago was this, was living in a metaverse, right? right. Everything operating inside the computer, like everyone. And they actually went, went as far as to change their name. And it, the stock got really beat up because of that, because people wanted fiscal responsibility. They, you know, and and listen, AI in it, you know, when you read about it, it does have many more uses than I mean, we we discussed the met, you know, quote unquote metaverse when that was going down. Yeah, and we we all could see benefits potentially, but you know, not like this AI yeah. this AI could touch everyone. Uh, it could touch everyone, yes. Yeah. So, so it's probably, yeah. As you're building, you, and and again, I say like that it, it it already is touching everyone, right? It's I mean touching everyone already. Everyone yeah. sees how their phone responds to them, you know, and and how ads start showing up in your feeds, and that yeah. that is already artificial intelligence that's existed, right? It's, it's there's so many things. Yeah, out we're already there, in it, <laughs> right? Yeah. We've been we've been in it already. The artificial intelligence, we've been in it already. I think that maybe now it's becoming uh more accessible to you know and what they're trying to do is make it accessible to other companies and industries and and say well if it works so well you know in in technology sector you know with with social media and advertising and stuff well why don't we expand it and touch all these other companies and businesses and 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 I think that's getting people really excited. I mean, if I listen to it and I get excited, you know, you're like, you're, you're listening to, you know, Google engineers and, and they give lectures and they're like showing you these graphs and how much it's going to grow and how it's going to touch people and how it's going to improve. So 
you know, how can you not get excited, especially like, you know, when they're telling you about, you know, how robots are going to be doing all this magic, magical, you know, solutions to our problems. It's, it is very exciting, but well, we're right up at nine 30. Yeah. Rob also mentioned there is some risk to AI as well. Oh yeah. <laughs> so. Well, like look, any technology, right. Then yeah. we're going to bring There's in two bad sides of every coin. That's for sure. We're going to bring the bad. Exactly. We've, we've all, we've all seen the Terminator series. I think that started with uh, AI. So with that, yeah. Let's all try to have a great day. Awesome job, Dean, as always. We're a minute into the opening bell. Awesome job, buddy. Everyone stay safe out there. Have a great trading day. Hope to see you guys tomorrow. All right. We'll see you.